forever. Dog! She had the power of a demon. This week on the podcast. Christopher Pike's The Last Vampire 5, Evil Thirst. Welcome to Teen Creeps, the podcast that discusses why I pulled fiction. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay K. Tai. I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly Nugent. And we're finally back to the pike with finally the last <laughs> vampire five. Finally. Finally back to the pike. Yeah. Um, yeah, I am happy and excited. So here's how happy and excited I was. I finished this book at about nine. 30 or 10 the other night Mm -hmm. and then immediately read six because (gasps) I couldn't handle it (laughs) oh oh my gosh I feel like I'm gonna like say question things and you're gonna be like I don't know well I had already read them before but I was like I have to I have to read what happens next I felt like I was 14 again oh man I couldn't help it and I went upstairs and I told I was like so you know that book I was reading because for all, like, I was downstairs, he was upstairs doing work, and he knew I was reading for Teen Creeps. Yeah. I'd come up, I was like, so, I read two books while I was downstairs. Uh, I mean, I, I, had I had the book on hand, I would have done the same. Yeah, this is a super, like, cliffhanger. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Do you want to um, read the back of the book? Yes, I will. The Last Vampire's Love and Pride. Elisa's daughter, Kalika a bloodthirsty monster with powers far beyond Elisa's, is gone. It is Elisa's task to track her down and destroy her. Yet Elisa still has trouble believing her daughter is totally evil. She still hopes to save Kalika, even if it means risking her own life, and perhaps the lives of everyone in the world. Um, Kind of accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Close. It, like, it it leaves out a lot of stuff, but it's not... It's not, not really mine. Include, include everything. Yeah. Um. She does go after her really hard, though. She does. Yeah. She does. Um. Yeah. It's. Uh. I think the thing. I'll just say the thing I was most annoyed by to get it out of the way. Please. Why does she keep not recognizing the people from her past? I know. Even keeps though happening. she's like got them at the forefront of her brain while it's happening like with arturo in um red dice Mm -hmm. uh book three it's like do you think maybe you're reminiscing about your past because this is the same person it is a little bit tricky because yeah it's like for the sake of the reader she has to be reminiscing about this because it's in first person yeah um and she's like, hmm, I'm remembering the time when, like, I met this, like, weird reptile demon guy. And yeah. he was, like, real fucked up and caused this huge, big, like, he was, like, an earth mover guy. And he caused this big earthquake. And this was, like, in Egypt, like, way, way past. And it, like, my but, best like, friend died in it. It also happens to do with, like, exactly what Suzama wrote I know. in the script. And and oh, isn't it weird how like this like random tacked on one at the end specifically talks about my daughter in a bad way, even though the one I just read before this did not talk about her in a bad way. It was very ambiguous. Yeah. And then also like, isn't it weird that like the son of the guy who like just happens to find this new thing, uh, this, this new scroll. Yeah. Is like, I don't know, like, I feel this connection with him. Like, I know him, maybe. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah, anywho. Oops, it's him. He's the I, guy. I, anywho, I'm definitely going to trust them immediately to help me kill my daughter. This book was very touching. Yeah. The stuff with, like, her and her daughter. And, like, I, I just... it. It was really like heartbreaking and moving. I, yeah. I really liked that stuff. Yeah, it truly really is very sad at the end. Um, the other thing, and like I guess this one isn't as like Dosita as I first thought it was, is because when she goes to see the talk, so she's going to this seminar, this talk led by this guy named Dr. Donald Cedar. Mm-hmm. He says he's found this um 
prophetic script or like scroll by a woman named Suzama from ancient Egypt who was like a prophet of the order of Isis um worshiped Isis and she per- she like already knew about Krishna or or no she already yeah she knew she about Krishna foresaw two of them and Jesus. then she foresaw the like Vedas I'm like it up these are things I should write down beforehand. But so she predicted all these things. And so he feels really secure in thinking that she's right. Um, and and spoiler alert, his son, James, has just been running it like this rival faction that caused Suzama's death. Mm-hmm. In ancient Egypt, there there was like some battle that took place, huge earthquake. It leveled the city. Yeah, like it swallowed a, yeah. an entire city. And and all the like pyramids are smaller. Like they all used to be way bigger. And she is not fucking connecting the two, even though the order that had to do with killing Suzama. Do you remember the name of it? Mm, oh. Cetians. Yeah. And yeah. then the guy's name is Cedar. I know. S-E-T-E-R and Cetians is S-E-T-I-N-S. I know. I was like, Cedar. And he's like the one. I Get a yeah. clue. She, there's, okay, so there's two things that bother me about this. Just get it, about this book, just to get it out of the way. Yeah. That, like, A, that she's so clueless about this. And B, I, I don't like that so she's from india and i know mm-hmm. this is a thing with all of the books uh-huh she's from india but she's she herself is aryan yeah is that what well, so aryans originated in india yeah um but she's like blonde hair blue eyes um well aryans aryans immigrated to india so then I'm, like settled there for a really long yeah i'm time. looking at indo-aryan peoples uh so they split off around 1800 to 1600 BC from Iran and then moved to northern India, which constitutes the Vedic people. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, it, to me, and I, and I know that like you could be like, oh, well, technically that's correct. Mm-hmm. But it feels kind of like a, a cheat yeah. to be like, oh, don't worry, this character still looks white like what i hope my like what my assumption is yeah it was written that way so that like you identified with the character more or like she had more access or more privilege and i'm sure there was like a publisher's note there somewhere yeah and i will just say i'm not saying this excuses it but we have gotten actual feedback from an indian woman who is fine with it yeah i think it's just a very personal thing i can't say because I'm white. I mm-hmm. wouldn't make the assumption that all or even most people are fine with it. All I know is we heard from a an Indian woman mm-hmm. and she was like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just a thing that like, I'm not like, oh, you absolutely because ha- I hate when people tell you that you should be enraged on behalf of your self self. <laughs> yeah. When you're like, yeah, but I'm OK with it. Yeah. And then they're like, no, you should. And it's like, but that's not it's not how I took it. This is my personal experience. And you telling me I should be offended at something is more offensive. Yeah. It's it's just very like didactic. And I'm like, I don't need you to pontificate. At yeah. Me. I don't need you coming in here and being my white knight. Yeah. Capital W white. <laughs> like because it, it often is like like white people like an angry white man being like, but you should be like offended or like I'm not like, that mm-hmm. intersectional women or white feminists who are maybe like fronting too much about being intersectional. Mm-hmm. Like when it comes to things like this, and I'm not saying that's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of a very specific tweet that I saw <laughs> recently that had me thinking about this general topic is like, so there's a super fine line between, I think, being a good ally mm-hmm. and um, trying to get attention. Well, also, I think there's a difference. Like being a good ally also means like letting someone else talk to. Exactly. And like 
trying to raise someone else's voice instead of being like, listen to me, me, yeah, me, me, exactly. me, me. So my thought is, I'm like, I, my reaction to to this character being a white woman mm-hmm. from India mm-hmm. was like, eh? Yeah. Like my reaction was just kind of like, is this weird? Is this definitely kinda- my reaction too? And I yeah. think if because we have talked about um my fantasy of taking these books and making it into like a Netflix I series. I was literally <laughs> thinking about this. I was like, I think I might I would totally change I would it change to it have to her an, be to an Indian. Indian woman. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um because I, I was actually just thinking no about the reason. There really is no no reason. A reason. No. It's not to say that like like me putting forth my theory that like maybe it's too because then she would have like a wider privilege in society like i don't really think like that's me trying to think of a devil's advocate argument i don't think there is any reason that she no. shouldn't be an indian character no yeah i mean or, i think i it, mean like classically indian ethnicity yeah i think i think it's like the the reasoning to me is probably like a dated publicity move yeah or not publicity move but like um or marketing like, move i don't know how to write an indian woman mm-hmm. even though i'm making her indian because like it, she's aryan but like she was born and grew up in india so she yeah. is like an indian nationality i would say though that in a lot of like uh cultures non-white cultures there is a colorism issue and so i think Casting her as a white woman from India might exacerbate like a colorism issue. No, no, no. All I mean is like, I keep saying Indian woman. It's like, I get it. The character is supposed to be Indian. Indian, But I don't think that that should count. I think it should be an ethnically Ethnically, Indian woman. I was literally thinking about that on the toilet today. (laughs) I was like, hmm. Which is the best place to think about it. Yeah, it is. You know what um, I was thinking about on the toilet? What? How SNL shouldn't have had on that um, congressman to oh, apologize that guy. to him. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's not SNL's fault. It's NBC's fault. Yeah. I feel really bad for the writers and actors on the show for being subjected to that. Yeah. I mean, it's and, also like, like forced when compliance and fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kanye was wearing that hat mm-hmm. and rapping and you could see everyone like being like, oh, God. yeah. Or trumping on the show. Yeah. Anyway, that was that was my deep toilet thought uh, today. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Um, I. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of shitty. Yeah, it, but it's just like. It, but it's I'm not going to go in every like, book. I'm not going to go and like demand that Christopher Pike like release a new version of the book. Like, yeah, it's no. Um, like yeah. it, it, it's it's not enough of an issue that I'm like I ref- like boycott these books or something. Yeah. Um, they're still worth reading. It's, yeah. it's just like, eh, well, that's a shame. Yeah. That was just like my thought. I was like, yeah, eh, would have wished another way, but, uh, but okay. So, yeah. To so, get that out of the way. So, okay. So what, how, ha- how this story goes, this is how the story goes. <laughs> um, so Sita slash Elisa, mm-hmm. uh, at, at the beginning of the book has just experienced an attack from Kalika because basically um so like Kalika wants to know where um John the new Jesus Christ is at because Sita's friend Paula gave birth to him she was like impregnated by a white light in Joshua Tree yeah <laughs> and she's on an trying to get of, at the uh, baby X-Files. yeah <laughs> exactly and um so she kidnaps Seymour to try to coax the information out of Sita. Sita refuses. Kalika throws him into off the Santa Monica pier into the water and throws a stake through his heart. Sita can't make him into a vampire because his wounds are too severe. She goes to put him on a funeral pyre. She's about to burn this fucker because he's dead. Burn him because he's died. Yeah. And instead she's like, hmm, I'm gonna do a little experiment and pour a vial of baby John's blood on him. And then he comes back to life and uh here we are. And she like does not tell him that he was dead. No. So at the beginning of the book, he just thinks that he was like knocked into the water and yeah, is, he thinks was fine. He's, like knocked unconscious or yeah. something. And so where the players stand is that she and Seymour 
are now like trying to outrace Kalika to find John because yeah. she wants to protect John from Kalika. She doesn't know what Kalika is going to do with John, but something bad. She or thinks. she, yeah, she wants to find Kalika and and stop her. Yeah. Um, and then like hopefully just Paula and John stay mm -hmm. um hidden somewhere. They don't know where they are. Yeah. Uh, and also like Paula has not called her when she was supposed to call her so she's like yeah. i have no idea where she is yeah she's worried but she doesn't think that kalika has gotten to her no and so they go to this talk they meet james dr cedar's son who's cute he's cute and everyone's wearing like scientology outfits yeah yeah they're like armed scientologists who believe in like a an Egyptian lady, Nostradamus. Yeah. And they believe it is their responsibility to take out the dark mother so that she doesn't harm the new Christ. Yeah. Except that that's not what they believe. Dr. Cedar thinks that's what they believe. Um, but really, it's that, and Cedar doesn't know it, but Kalika... Um, brought herself into the world as Sita's daughter to protect the child. Mm -hmm. And so really they're after her so that they can take possession of the child to um, impress their alien bosses. I didn't really get that. <laughs> so there's like these lizard aliens. Uh-huh. That... Which is a Christopher Pike favorite. He loves lizard aliens. Yeah. So these lizard aliens and like a bunch of them like in a tiny spaceship. Like a whole committee? Control. Like, they come down possessed. in an invisible spaceship. They like are watching slash possess the hot sun. Yeah. And. And he's actually. This the, hot sun has been alive for as long as. Almost as long as Sita has. Or he. Yeah. He um just kind of like. Went back into being an alien lizard man. Yeah. And was and just like then, waiting. Yeah. And then he like then manifested as James and inserted himself into Dr. Cedar's life. Yeah. And Dr. Cedar is a good guy. Oh, yeah, he's innocent. Yeah. He has no idea. He thinks that they are going to protect the child. Yeah. He also like Poor just, Dr. Cedar. He, he also, uh, he's like, oh, I adopted this child into my life. And then, like, shortly after, I had this crazy dream that was like, go dig in this spot in Egypt. So I did. And, oh, my gosh, I found these, like, scrolls that are written by this woman, Susama. And they're prophetic. And my son was, like, helping me <laughs> translate them. And my son is like, should we start an army? And I'm like, do we yes. need this many guns? And my son's like, yes. yes. And I'm like, okay. Like, okay, I, I mean, want to you protect know, the baby. <laughs> yeah, you know better, son. Yeah. You're younger. I'm, like, out of touch. And I have heart problems. <laughs> oh, I have heart problems. It was really sad. That was sad. I felt really bad for him. I felt bad for him, too. So then... I was sad that he had to know that John or James was bad. I know. I wish he could have just died not knowing. Yeah. But he knows because... Because yeah, he had to. <sighs> so, like, okay, so then... I thought that the scene actually, it was like really horrifying, but cool. So Seymour and Sita are like tailing Kalika. They find her because also Sita's being so willfully She obtuse. is so stupid. She's being so she just like ignoring, like, ignoring. she always has been when it comes to Kalika because Kalika has always been like, mother, I will always tell you the truth. Please also always tell me the truth. And Sita's like straight up always lying to her. Yeah. And Kalika is always telling the truth, which is, but she's also never outright, just fucking say. Yeah. Just fucking say that you came to Earth to protect the child. I know. And also when like later in the book, when Kalika like reveals everything and then she's like, you never told me. And she's like, you just only hear what you want to. And I was like, yeah, but like also you didn't really tell. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess, I mean... She did say, I think she did say a lot of the time, like, I'm not going to hurt him. Mm -hmm. But, like, she needed to go a step further because that's not that believable when you, like, murdered your at-home lunch. I know. And then, like, murdered a bunch of people. Yeah. So she murders the at-home lunch, which also 
So she's like, when she said, like, oh, he'll be reborn anew or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or like he he'll have he'll be he'll have a better reincarnation or something like that. His reincarnation will be something better. Yeah. She thinks that's like, enough to say, like, this guy was yeah. dying of cancer and, Be like... specific. She was not being specific at all. Never was. And it was, like, so funny because then later Sita's like, oh, that's what she meant when she said that, like, he's gonna be reincarnated into something better. Like, he was, like, literally about to die and she was just, like, ending it soon. But and also... Like, okay, but, like, you killed him via fingernails. Yeah. And also... <laughs> You kept him trapped in your fucking house and like miserable fe- kept him fed like you ate uh, ate him. Yeah, you ate him on the daily. Months. So like you're not blameless. Yeah, it was just kind of like I was like, yes, the reincarnation like, is going to occur but, but the method. And and when 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 Sita was like, hey, what happened to those cops, Kalika? Oh, yeah. And Kalika's like, don't worry about them. They're fine. It's like, well, you could do a little more to sound believable. Because, like, because are they fine? Are they? You'd say, like, no, I, like, I let them go. How many times do I have to tell you, yeah. like, who I am and why I'm here? <laughs> Just I know. be open. Don't keep secrets. Secrets aren't good. Secrets don't make friends. There's a phrase. There's a phrase. It's um, secrets, secrets. Don't keep them. Because if you do, beep, beep, goes the car. <laughs> oh i forgot about like, that phrase. if someone's mad at you they beep their car that's yeah, that. yeah. like people will be mad secret at you. secrets don't keep them if you do beep beep, beep, beep goes the, the car. car oh beep beep goes, goes the, the car. car i'm sorry i always forget the goes the i know people always forget that it's part. like but also i've seen both versions well because um something about idioms is that they loot they drop like half of them drop a lot once people yeah. are familiar with them yeah and so then you're not saying the part that makes it make the most sense yeah yeah like blood is thicker than water is actually like blood of the fuck it's blood of the something is thicker than water of the womb meaning ew yeah i think meaning something like opposite (laughs) um right like the phrase the proof of proof is in the pudding Mm -hmm. the full saying is the proof of the pudding is in the eating is that for real yeah meaning what like if it's poison you're gonna die yeah or like It'll prove itself when you're eating it and it's yummy. Oh. (laughs) So it's like we use it in a way where where it's it's almost like the pudding speaks for itself. (laughs) And it's like, well, yeah, but like you don't know until you've eaten it. Yeah. So it's it's missing that extra step. True, true, true. Yeah. So that's what happens with the beep beep the car. Beep beep the car. Beep beep goes the goes the car. You're not, you're, like not, beep, beep the car. you're not beep. You're not beeping the car. No, no. Beep beep goes the, goes car. the car. But like it's shorthand. It gets mm-hmm. shorthanded. It gets shorthanded. Mm-hmm. Hi, welcome to the break that we're taking from the podcast that you're listening to to discuss one of our sponsors, Quip. Quip is a better electric toothbrush created by dentists and designers. It was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, affordable, and even enjoyable. Because one of the most important things we do for our health every single day, we should be doing it more than once every single day, is brushing our teeth, but most of us don't do it properly. Oh my God. So you're probably thinking, well, how can I get myself back on track? How can you? Well, you can use Quip, you dingus. Yeah. Quip uses sensitive sonic vibrations. These are gentle enough on your sensitive gums because guess what? You idiots are all brushing too hard. Way too hard. And electric toothbrushes, most of them are too abrasive, but not quick. Yeah. It's just like a little massage. And speaking of you being a dingus, um, Quip is great because did you know that you're supposed to be changing your toothbrush every three months? I bet you didn't. Yeah, you're an idiot. So with Quip, your brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months, as said, for just $5. That is affordable. Yeah. And the thing that I love about that, I uh, love about Quip is that, that it comes to you every uh, three months and you don't even have to think about it. It just happens. Yeah. Um, And also the Quip is a cute toothbrush. It's super cute. It's like, it's so cute. Cu- it's cuter than any of you. 
definitely cuter than the two of us. Do you want a toothbrush that's prettier than you? Then get Quip. Do you want a toothbrush that sticks to your mirror in a very convenient spot? Yes. Get Quip. Quip. So that every time you look in the mirror, your toothbrush is like, I'm prettier than you. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am in the mirror. Yeah. So if you want this affordable toothbrush to be even more affordable, you can get your first refill pack for free if you do this promo. So what you're going to do, you're going to go to getquip.com slash teen creeps. It starts at just $25. And like I said, you're going to get that first refill pack in three months for freaking free. That's amazing. It is amazing. So again, that's your first refill pack free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash teen creeps. Get quip dot com slash teen creeps. And now back to the show. Ah! Um, I did enjoy the moments between... Oh, you know what I really liked? I took a picture of this. So speaking of Sita's countless flashbacks, Mm -hmm. I did love there's a passage where she's describing when she first met Suzama, which like I shipped them together. I really liked them together. Her, uh, Sita and her. Yeah, for sure. This is the passage. Suzama was not nearly beautiful, though she would have been considered attractive in any age or place. Her allure came from the marks that austerity and pain had stamped on her young beauty, marks that made her enchanting, not repulsive. It was as if she had witnessed a thousand lives of suffering and come to a realization that transcended mortal acceptance. She was both saintly and sensual, her lips so generous she had only to smile to make you feel kissed. I loved her when I saw her, and until then I had never loved anyone on sight except for Krishna himself. Isn't that nice? It is nice. Yeah, that's a really beautiful passage. It's just like, I was like, dang. Yeah. What a pure feeling for them. Yeah. But then she dies. And she dies. In Um, a big earthquake. Yeah. That dream that Suzama interprets for the queen. Oh, yeah. I was like, is that where I learned this? The Mm. whole like when you point a finger at somebody, three fingers are pointed back at you. What's a common saying? Whatever you. Yeah, but like. Is this the first place I learned it? Because I was like 14. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I also like, so it's like you pass judgment on yourself, but then Mm -hmm. also like the threefold thing. Yeah. Which is like very common in pre-Christian beliefs too. Yeah. Of like whatever you put out there comes back at you in threes. Yeah. So like Donald Trump is fucked. Oh my God. He's so fucked. He's super fucked. But he's also like a walking like wet McDonald's bag. Yeah, he's just like a he's, walking open sore. Yeah. Yeah, that just like, um, that's infected. Mm-hmm. And so you shouldn't get too close to it because you might get infected. Like he's just a, like a walking staph infection. Oh, he's like when um, when I had foot and mouth disease, hoof and mouth disease <laughs> when I was like 11 and I didn't tell oh, I my parents and then I went to camp and then I had 104 degree fever and had to be taken home. Yeah, he is. He's like my mouth when I had full of sores. himself hoof and mouth disease. Yeah, he's hoof and mouth disease. Yeah. And Just not one of those around. cute like stuffed animal versions of diseases. Have you seen those? Yeah, I have. No, not that. he is not that. He's not that. He's, he's like, he's like a, the congealed pus. <gasps> In yeah. like the form of a man, but like also not entirely successful. No, no, no. Because like, I don't know what his form is. It's, it's like very ambiguous under that suit. Okay. You know how we all went to medical school? Uh-huh. So like, you know that part in medical school where yeah. they're like, they take a body and they're like, oh, this is a body of a person that died from this disease. Yeah. And like, but it's very old. It's very scary. Yeah. And it's very bloated. It's very bloated. We also like, they're like unrelated. We found it floating in a river. Yeah. It was there for like weeks. Yeah. But they're like, but please keep remembering that the cause of death was hoof and mouth disease. Yes. And they're like, and and also like um, the this like manifestation of hoof and mouth disease mm-hmm. is also racist. Oh, and yes. sexist. Yes. Like it, it holds beliefs somehow, mm-hmm. but like maybe not even one it really like understands what the belief is Mm -hmm. it just likes the reaction it's getting yeah it's almost like a mirror so this yeah he is the threefold oh you know what he is what he's that body Uh uh-huh blended Uh uh-huh put into a petri dish Mm -hmm. because it's for testing and so it like it doesn't have any specific form 
mm-hmm. it's just there for reactions. Right. That's true. He is that. But you like forgot about it and you didn't put it back in the fridge, the Petri dish. Yeah. So then it's out. And also you should never have had it in the first place. No, good God. Yeah. You never should have had it. Never. Um, I was uh, on, if you play Red Dead Redemption 2, um, you when you kill people that are like, if you kill someone, you lose honor. Mm. And so like your honor goes up and down. Mm-hmm. You come across, you there's like, it's huge, huge world. So you can just run around and do whatever. Uh-huh. Um, I came across a group of KKK members. And so I just <laughs> killed all of them. And Great. I didn't lose any honor. <laughs> so usually every person you kill, it's like it it goes like a ding, little bit and then of honor. You lose honor every time and nothing happened. So you didn't gain either? You just didn't lose? I don't know. Maybe I gained. I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't lose any honor. Well, that's um, good. Yeah. And then I looted all of their bodies and I stole their horse. Good move. Very smart. Yeah. Then I got killed by a bear immediately <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> and I was like, damn. <laughs> It was like immediate. I was like, <laughs> and then I'm like riding my horse away, and then I hear like, Roar, and I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> so it's like you don't lose honor, but like immediate retribution. I get. I mean, it, I don't know. I think I it's just probably went, unrelated. It's unrelated. Yeah. I went into where a bear was living, and was <laughs> and like riding my horse all KK around, <laughs> who were also sharing the space. Yes. Uh, did you see that video of somebody playing? that game and um they're petting a dog in the game Mm -hmm. and then the person um pans over with their phone and their actual live dog is just staring at them (laughs) and it goes back to the game and back to the dog and and it it was like it was something some the caption was something like uh when your dog experiences betrayal (laughs) It's true. It's very cute. That's really cute. Like the, it's like a little beagle, and it r- truly looks angry. That's so cute. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, all I've been doing in this game is like, so you can pet random dogs, mm-hmm. and then you can like pat random horses. I every horse I see, I have to pat it. <laughs> I like walk up and just like pat people's horses. <laughs> Do you gain honor? No, oh. no. Okay. I've accidentally been doing a lot of crimes that I don't mean to. I'm clumsy <laughs> on my horse and I accidentally run over people. And then the entire town tries to shoot me. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just didn't. I couldn't control the horse. <laughs> the frames. I'm so sorry. My jacket is falling on your head it's, right it's now. Like, it's like, like it's move cuddling it. with my head. Yeah, it's like a hat. <laughs> Um, we are recording at the uh, Kelly Nugent Kelly Studios. Nugent Studios today. Mm-hmm. Um, so of um, course, naturally, that means that Lindsay's jacket's molesting my head. Yeah. Um, tried to get it out of the way of her cat because LH wanted to sit on it, like cats do, like cats do. Um, so so anyway, specificity is your friend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you have willed yourself into existence in order to protect a messiah yeah and you're kind of doing some sketchy stuff like just like be forthcoming with information tell your daughter or tell your mom yeah tell your mom tell your friend oh yeah this was a thing so like sita's like being very dumb because yes. she's like oh kalika like doesn't even know that like i have really good hearing and i can tell like what kind of pool she's next to when she calls me on the phone so I know that she's staying in Century City. And, and it's like Seymour is like, um, are you sure about that? Because like it sounds to me like she very intentionally walked out on her balcony and then was, was quiet like her for like a good period of time. Yeah, she's just like holding her phone out. I like both of us did smartphone holding. We did, we did. But this would have been not smartphone. It would have been like a it would have been like corded phone. Ho- hotel phone. Yeah, or like yeah, one of those gray yeah. cordless. Phones. So she, yeah, she's just like holding it out to the sounds of a pool, and it's like I'm super high up. I have a great view. I know. Oh, hang on, I have to be quiet for thirty seconds. And the whole time, she's just like, "You're in my trap. Yeah, you are in one of the tallest buildings in LA yeah. with a mistake pool. one, Kalika." <laughs> <laughs> so then they're like tailing Kalika, and then she's like, "Oh fuck." This is where Kalika's staying. They break into her house. They're like, oh, shit, she's going to go after her. Also, she's like, oh, shit, my daughter has very traditional tastes. I know. <laughs> I know. Not. It's like very modern taste. I know. I was very curious to not see what that modern, place Not crazy modern, but like. not old. 
I know. I, it sounded super boring. It sounded like it would all be like kind of sand colored. Yeah. Yeah. In that 90s look. Exactly. Too. It would all be 90s sand colored living room. Yep. Oh, God. Because this is 96. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know what that place looked like. Yep. Oh, there was like so I many. Have some taste, Kalika, but also like it's temporary. She probably didn't decorate it. She didn't. So she like, didn't what are these assumptions? It. This was probably making. a furnished model apartment. Yeah. And then she just took it. And Sita is also like, oh, interesting. She has like, um, like new age, like religious texts about. That's weird. It's I like, know. It's maybe it's an indication that like she's not evil. I know. I know. And then so then she sees this like oh these maps that are like different locations yeah like, trying to find paula and she's like uh i need to get the help of the cult yeah so she like, tells the cult call up my cult so she calls her friendly cult with a hot leader no mm -hmm. hot son, hot of, the son of a leader hot son of a cult leader yeah. the only one who could ever reach me was the son, <laughs> of, son, of, son of, a of a cult leader, leader. <laughs> We made it. <laughs> we got there. We got there. Took a little drowning. Son of a cult leader. <laughs> I tried to add hot. It was my fault. Was, this, was the hot son of a cult leader? You can do that. Yeah. It true. Works. Hey, we're going to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Curology. Curology is a one step skincare routine completely customized to you. Now, I. Skincare is a thing that, like, I know everyone's obsessed with, but I'm, like, insanely obsessed with it uh -huh. because I used to, I, I, I used to have really bad, um, like, cystic acne, uh -huh. and we both talked about how we pick at our skin. Yep. So, like, you know that if you have, the combination of cystic acne and picking at your skin is, like, the... It's, like, a literal nightmare. It's a literal nightmare because you can't... You can't stop. You can't stop and, it's and there. it won't... And it fixed. scars and it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. And you know what no one talks about when it comes to skincare? Mm. That you should do less. Yeah. There are Seriously. so many freaking products on the market. I will go through. I have like a graveyard of skincare products under my sink. Yeah. It's terrible. And also like what sucks also is trying to buy these products that are like over the counter products that are one size fits all. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, my skin's not like other people's skin. And that's and all you find at like a drugstore or yeah. Sephora. You're not getting like, you're not getting like expert opinions. Going to the dermatologist costs a billion dollars it costs a depending billion on your dollars. insurance plan. Yeah. So that's why I have really, really been liking Curology. I love Curology. Yeah. Because it addressed. My most important concerns, which is breaking out and the general like texture of my skin has, for whatever reason, been terrible the past couple of years. Mine has gotten like rough. Yes, exactly. And like uh, uneven looking. Yeah. It's really weird. But since I started using Curology, my skin is super soft. It mm -hmm. doesn't have that weird look when I look in the mirror where I'm like, when did my skin turn to sandpaper? I know. Same. Yeah. So Curology is a one-step skincare routine completely customized to you. And like we said, without scheduling an appointment, paying a copay, or even leaving your dang house, you can connect with an online dermatology provider who will design a custom prescription acne formula to be sent right to your door. All you have to do is go to Curology.com, answer some questions about your skin, snap a few quick selfies, man up and do it. Good no God. makeup. It's going to suck. You look. It's going to be terrible. It's, did I want to cry after I took selfies of myself with no makeup super close up? Yes, I did. Yeah. And, and you have to do it front and side and side. And that's just you're just going to have to bite the bullet and do it. It be is. Brave. Be, be your best you. Be your best you. You will. Your skin will thank you later. Yeah, because that's the thing is this is the first step to getting their expert advice they have to look at your face what are they not going to look at your face that's not customized also that's the last day that you're going to have that skin yeah so so just do it do it just do it just do it it's like a shirt it's like a shirt it'll change yeah so if you want some cool stuff associated with curology did you know that because we're doing this ad for them you get special discounts yeah you did yeah so go to curology.com slash teen creeps and you get your first month Free. Yeah. Plus a free gift. All you have to do is pay four ninety five for the shipping and handling. That's freaking crazy. There's these aren't gimmicks and it's not a complicated routine. And eighty-eight percent 
of Curology users see results. That's a really good yeah. percentage. It's one bottle if you want. I got the one where it's um, cleanser, mm-hmm. the personalized uh, bottle of medication, mm-hmm. and then um, moisturizer. That's what I got too. And I'm loving it. I love it. Yeah, it's great. So again, you go to curology.com slash teen creeps for your first month free plus a free gift that is C U R O L O G Y dot com slash teen creeps. And now back to the show. And then they go like black ops crazy. Yeah. And she's like, oh, um, they're a little more organized than I thought they'd be. I know because she goes out to their compound, too, and they're like, there's automatic weapons. And she's like, oh, cool. Okay, I'll just put a pin in that. Yeah. So they and then, go like full- she realizes so quickly that this was a bad idea. Instantly. I mean, I was like, these people Sita, are not going to die. What are you doing? Don't you know, you know that your daughter has amazing powers. And- She's half human, half vampire. All fucking like um hindu goddess mother of destruction i know what are you doing and the way you're doing it too is to like have it be like a few people at a time versus her because they're all having to like either climb up or like go down from higher floors into her domain yep so it's like it's not even like a bunch of people in a wave it's like five people at a time yep so of course they're gonna fucking die yeah she just throws like half of them off of a balcony it's very funny like 30 stories <laughs> i thought out. it was very funny it was pretty funny <laughs> so then sita's like i'll take care of it which i was like sita you can't we all know you can't you don't have it in you to kill her you're not gonna come out of this and kalika throws her off a fucking balcony this part was cool I thought. it was cool because she like gets like destroyed straight up destroyed like destroyed broken boint boins bones broken boins teeth, teeth her teeth like, are just off off she's just like teeth are out there's floating yeah she's bleeding out and also like when she describes so she like smashes her face her face is completely smashed yeah um because she falls into like a five foot pool from it's like 30 st- way too high up um yeah, so she just smashes her skull on the bottom of a Cool. And then she like, like her mouth is closed, and then she like opens her mouth, and just like blood and teeth come out. And yeah, she's like, uh oh, yeah, she's like, oh, this isn't a good sign. <laughs> but then her body starts knitting itself back together, and she jumps out of a pool, and a very like sweet cop is like, "Here's a jacket. Are you okay?" She's like, "I'm fine." He's like, "But you like fell into a pool." Oh my like, god! Thank you so much for your concern. Also, I have to go. Back. And they, yeah, they grow back. Every like, so this is the magic of Yaksha's blood with a drop of John's. Yeah, yeah, that she is like very strong now. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's right. Because she took some of John's blood. She was like, "What's yeah. gonna happen?" She's like, "I'm gonna just take a drop." Of course, I, was like, I would too. Take. I would take more than gulps. a drop. I would yeah, just like drain drink that kid it. right yeah. until he before he's gonna die, and then yeah. just like feed him a ton of iron. Yeah. <laughs> Here, chop chop, little baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing like this baby chewing on like tons of like little no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Here, baby, like suck on this iron spike. <laughs> mm. Mm, yummy. Um, so she runs out, and then oh right, so she goes out to. Is it back to Joshua Tree? Where did she I kind find of forget the order of events because of the flashbacks? Yeah. Um yeah, she re- oh, she sees oh, she and James go back to the compound. She's like, "Bitch, let me see the rest of the scroll." Mhm. She reads it. It talks about basically Paula going to a, a mirror in the sky. Um something about like an emerald mirror in the sky where the f- where like feet run but never touch the ground or that's right something like that shoes right shoes it was like yeah a shoes shoe where there are shoes with no feet that's right yeah 
Yes, and, because then she goes back to that homeless dude, Mike. Yeah, which I am fascinated by him, and we don't get a story. No. Um, he's just like this kindly old hobo. I know. Who seems to be like a sage. And she plays poker with him, and yeah, he tells her basically like... And he's like, oh, I wish if I was if I was dealing in the casino, I would have my shoes with me, which is those um, just like stacks of other cards ready to go mm -hmm. so that you don't have to shuffle. Yeah. You and, just keep siphoning yeah, he's like, I'd have like card. six decks or something. Yeah. And she's like, oh, yeah, shoes that don't have feet. Oh, yeah. There's they're not the playing casino. Poker. They're playing blackjack. Oh, that's right. My mom was a blackjack dealer in Reno. <laughs> and oh, Tahoe. Shows? Yeah. Nice. Yep. So wait, do they end up going to Tahoe? Yep. Where they go? Emerald Bay in Tahoe. Ah, mm -hmm. Emerald. Emerald. That's where that comes from. So she figures that out because of him. And um, yeah, and also at some point goes to... Oh, I think she goes to Joshua Tree after Kalika is killed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because she like gets the light. Yeah. Too, and it but turns her pregnant. into big, a big old ghost. And then it like just so happens that that's where James is like going to hand the baby over for her for his alien bosses to eat as a snack. Is that so that happens then? That happens at the very end, doesn't it? Yeah, is very, very, very when does end. the Joshua tree thing happen? I guess it would be around then. Too. All you know is she gets full of moonlight and floaty again. Yeah. And that's how she's able to see all of these things take place and control. Yeah, she becomes the, kind of like ghosty. The mind of one of the alien oh, overlords. Yeah. I does that happen in Joshua Tree or does that happen? It happens in the desert. It must not happen in Joshua yeah, Tree. Maybe it happens. I, it, I, must, it happens at the very end. It must happen. I pictured it in the desert. In Tahoe or something. Yeah. I totally straight up forget. Hey guys, wanted to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Care Of. Care Of is a monthly subscription vitamin service that delivers completely personalized vitamin and supplement packs right to your door. So some cool stuff about Care Of is first, you can take an online quiz. It's fun quiz asks you about your diet, health goals, and lifestyle choices, and takes only five minutes to find out what vitamins and supplements you specifically need, which is cool because there are a lot of vitamins on the shelves out in the world. And 90% of people fall short of FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. So if you take care of quiz, you get the vitamins you need back on track and reach your health goals. Now, the thing about this thing is that's so easy. Your vitamins get delivered right to your door in personalized, easy to remember daily packs, which are perfect for a busy on the go lifestyle. And they even have specialty offerings. So if you're vegan or vegetarian, there are options available to match those dietary needs. Now, I love filling out this quiz, Lindsay. It's, I love filling out quizzes of any quizzes. kind. Oh. oh, my God. I love quizzes. So we much. love quizzes here at Teen Creeps. You guys know we love quizzes yeah. here at Teen Creeps. Um, so you take this quiz. It's all about you. And it helps you kind of look at your life and be yeah. like, okay, what are the things that uh, I want to address? Okay. Yeah. Am I sleepy all the time? Yes. Am I having trouble with short-term memory? Always. Am I... Uh, wanting to, oh, a, a, am I wanting just a little more like energy and pizzazz? Never. I have that in spades. <laughs> energy and, so and pizzazz. I, I wasn't given those vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> but you can, like, for me, mine was like short-term memory. I wanted to be able to, uh, like, work out more efficiently and um, being like run, like burned out and yeah. tired all the time. Um. And to get super personal, one of my issues is regularity. And so oh. it was fiber and probiotics. Nice, girl. Yeah. So here's the thing. Good. Actually, I agree with regularity for me. If it's, not, if it's not happening, I'm having a panic attack and I call it poo-poo panic. Yeah, because your, your gut is very closely related to your moon. mood. Look it up. Also it's to your mood. Real. Also to your mood. Like just like physically. Because, like it's your moons. Like are connected to women's bodies. Exactly. And witches. And witches. And also witches. So 
Um, I really like care of because they, uh, you get your cute little packs and they like say mm-hmm. your name on them, which is cute. It's very cute. And then you can also get like quick stick powders and stuff. Like, do you want a little extra pep or do you want a little extra like de stress? That yeah. is really fun. You can super customize. So if you guys want to get in on this, you can get 25% off your first month of personalized vitamins. Go to takecareof.com. That's T A K E C A R E O F dot com and enter promo code Teen Creeps, all one word. Again, that's 25% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins. Visit takecareof.com, enter promo code Teen Creeps. And now back to the episode. <coughs> Do you Okay, so Kalika dies. And that's like on a little island in the water that's off of the lake that it, at Tahoe. Yeah. Um I'll read Kalika's oh yeah. So James just like fucking shoots the shit out of Kalika and she dies. Yeah. And she dies holding John and like trying to hold him up to keep him away from all the blood. Mm-hmm. And James takes the baby and or she almost skedaddles. dies. Um, cause remember she then like, cause what, uh, cause Sita's dying too. So she feet like, we think she's dead. Oh yeah. But then she like drags herself over to Sita and is like, drink my blood. And she's like, what the hell? And she's like, just do it. Like, I'm going to die anyway. Just yeah. Drink the blood. I came on this earth to, be- oh, I'll just read it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Yeah, Kalika has given her blood, la la la. She's like, you should have told me. This amuses her. You hear what you wish. You are more human than you know, but that is your greatest strength as well. Krishna loves all humanity as his children. La la la, go on. Um, says, la la la, so she's warning her that she can't believe everything she reads. Um, a convulsion suddenly grips her body and her back arches off the floor. My tears are a river. Five thousand years of life and death have not prepared me for this. To see my own daughter die, all because of me. How cruel the irony is. Yet Kalika, with her failing strength, pulls my hand down and kisses my fingers. Words cannot inspire faith. Only love can destroy the Maya. Is this just an illusion to you? Even your own death? She she squeezes my hand and her eyes are bright. You are no illusion. I really am your daughter. A sigh escapes her lips and her eyes close. Inside her chest, I hear her heart stop, but there is air left in her lungs, and she says in that special soft voice of hers, I love you, mother. Those are her last words. She is gone, back to the abyss from which she came. I got misty at that part. because It's so sad. It's very sad. And also, like, she has never said I love you Mm -hmm. to her ever, and Sita says it to her a lot. Yeah. And so, like... I think she like kind of notices that at the beginning of the book where she's like, she never fucking says I love you to me. And then she does. And those are her last words that she says, I love you, which I was like, oh, man, mm-hmm. that was sad. But again, it's like you could have said that earlier. She could have said I love you before. <laughs> Just like tell her what's going on. Yeah. I like it's it's just one of those like, oh, the prophecy can't be clear because of reasons. Mm hmm. <laughs> Because that's how they wrote it. It's like, it's fine. It's Mm -hmm. just like, could use some extra, like, detail to, like, make it more okay that these things aren't just outright said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because as it stands, it's just like, secrets, just straight up secrets. And for not really any reason. Exactly. I think, like, a a cool way to do it would have been, like, you know, and... Did you watch all of Angel? Yeah. So like the Shanshu prophecy. Mm-hmm. How like, well, at first. Like they just assumed it was about Angel. Well, first it's like Shanshu means live and die in ancient Sumerian. Mm-hmm. But they had always, at first they thought it was to die, that Angel was destined to die. And then it was like, oh, then he's destined to live. And then it ends up being true anyway, but not in the way we ever could have foreseen. Because Angel... The father will kill the son. Do you remember that? Yeah. And it turns out he does kill Connor uh, in. Oh, it's. um, He has to kill Connor. That's right. Because Connor's about to kill the whole world member. Yeah. And then so he has to. 
like kills Connor and then he makes that deal with Wolfram and Hart, which is then like let Connor just like be a normal have kid. never met me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, because um Oh my god, what is his name? Lorne. No. no. Librarian. Oh, not Giles, but not um, Giles. Oh now Wes. Wes. So um Wesley s- takes Connor as a baby away because of the prophecy yeah. the father will kill the child, but it's for that reason that he gets taken to the hell dimension and becomes the person that the father needed mm-hmm. to kill. So it's like, man, prophecies are a bitch. Yeah. But it's like it's so I I thought that show did did that prophecy in a really cool way. Yeah, well, it did it right. Whereas in this, it's like, no, we're just unclear for the sake of being That's unclear. The thing. And and the thing is, they do it right in the way that first you think it's like well, tricking I guess you because it's like live or die. The the prophecy in this is fine. It's just that like Kalika is so not forthcoming about her real nature. They're just like yeah. well. D- well, then, like, the prophecy would have been a lot clearer. And I think, yeah, maybe because so, you know, how Wes takes away Connor and mm-hmm. he like does it because and doesn't tell Angel what he's doing. Yeah. Because he's like Angel's the threat. Yeah. So maybe if there was something there that like why we need to know why. Yeah. Like maybe. Why is Kalika, Kalika not telling? Yeah. Just give a reason why Kalika couldn't say it. It could even be that like. In order to will herself into existence, she wasn't allowed to tell her daughter or her mother why. Something. Something. Like Something. just like just like some cosmic law. Yeah. We'll believe it as long as you tell it it, it, us, it exists. Or what if like they both know about the prophecy and they each think it's about each other? Right. Like what if I, one Kalika of my notes is what if so she's the dark mother? Like, yeah, because Kalika needs to be less perfect Mm -hmm. she's like way too just like perfect angel being even though she seems like demonic yeah but she should have just been flawed like sita i think i think we just fixed it yeah i think think she's she's too she thinks she's too perfect Mm -hmm. and is too like i know i keep making angel references but she's like illyria yeah she's just like i'm doing what i'm meant to do yeah no emotions but then if if we just throw in literally the dark mother, right? Because mm-hmm. I wrote in my notes, what if Sita's the dark mother? Yeah. So if I could think that Kalika could, so then Kalika, they could each think that of each other and be like, especially oh. because like she gave birth to Kalika. Exactly. In that way, she could be the dark mother. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why I thought she was. Yeah. Durr. And then I was like, why would Kalika even be the dark mother? Because she's not a mom. Yeah. Wake up. So well, because Kalima is yeah. mother of uh, destruction and creation. I see, and that's her name, Kalika. Yeah. So I think that's that's the solve. Yeah, is that they both think it's about each other. Yeah, and that Kalika isn't such a direct incarnation of Kalima. Right. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Done. <laughs> yeah, it just needed it needed an extra dimension so that it wasn't like, well, I wish you just would have told her. Yeah. But otherwise, like, I really loved this book. It's a really good one. It's really full of, like, it's tight. Like, mm-hmm. action is always happening. I think it's stronger than um, Phantom, the last one. Yes. Where, like, Ray just, like, exists. Is a ghost. Is a ghost. But, like, she, memory. But, like, she has to kill him to get rid of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This was, like, I, I liked this one um, a lot. I really liked this book. Yeah, that's why I couldn't stop. Wait, so it ends with, with what? With with Sita having to get the child back and saving it from the alien demons, the alien lizard people. So like she's successful at the end of the book. Okay, cool. Yeah, and she takes the baby back. But like, oh yeah, Seymour gets <gasps> injured again, again and she finally does make him a vampire she makes him a vamp i wonder if he's gonna be sexy after he's a vampire probably <laughs> i can't tell you oh my god you know because you well, i always it. knew though uh, but you very freshly know. yeah now i super know like in your head you're just like reading the s- excerpts about yeah in my Seymour. mind <laughs> uh, i couldn't stop myself oh man i can't I was wait like, oh th- this is the point where it's like really good yeah <sighs> Ah, mm-hmm. oh, and I remember I had like questions about like 
fuck, what did I? Ha- oh, she experiences enlightenment kind of in this part, in this book, sort of. Sort of. And then she comes back yeah. to herself. And then she like forgets she's what she like, remembered. Oh, right. I have to save the kid. <laughs> but like in the enlightenment, she's like, ah. Like, can I just stay here? And then it's like, nah, dude. No. There's some like lizard aliens. Yeah. About to eat a baby Christ. Which I'm like not super clear. It's not clear. Okay. At all. They're just like floating. Yeah. the That needed to be a lot more concrete, I think. Because it's like they beam here. And right. are invisible, and they're like going to eat the baby, but I don't really understand what that gets them. Are they all? I was literally picturing them like all, you know, in The Simpsons, the yeah, a, almost every time we see those crying monsters, and yeah, Kodos, or and, is that right? I don't remember Something what like that. the other one's name is. Every time we see them, usually they're like in their ship. Kang, I'm sorry, Krang is a Teenage Mutant Ninja ter- Turtles Terran. <laughs> terror teenage, mutant, teenage ninja mutant ninja terror um but most of the time when we see them it's like from their deck of their ship yeah i pictured like that's where they are inside of him yeah it's just like five lizard aliens inside the sky right yeah in like a red huh. hologrammy spaceship thing okay and they just come right away yeah kang and kodos i oh. was picturing I had an image in my mind and it's from something and now I can't think what it was, but they're like super gross and slug like. I wasn't even viewing them as aliens. This other something else from pop culture popped in my head. So I was just seeing creepy, slimy slug people. Ooh. Mm -hmm. You don't remember what that's from? Nope. Mm -hmm. Oh, Trump. Oh, yeah. I forgot about slugs. Yeah. Slugs can be cute, though. I think slugs are cute. Yeah, slugs are pretty cute with their little, like, (laughs) little little antennas. antennas. They're kind of cute. I take it back. (laughs) Oh, shit. He's a cat turd. Oh. Uh, Oh, maybe a cat turd that, like, got into the Petri dish. That's what happened. You're doing two experiments. Yep. One's involving a cat turd. Yeah. You are walking with the cat turd one, and you are so silly. You did not put back. No. The liquefied body. No. So you trip and you fall. Yeah. The cat turns like, foo, 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 Yeah, it flies. Foo. It's just spinning through the air. And when it falls into the Petri dish of of um being, mm-hmm. the liquid splashes at you and it hits you. Ew, it does? Yeah. What happens? You have to wash your face. It gets on your face. Ew. I know. And you gasp and some of it goes in your mouth. Why? Because you're an idiot that supported Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not us. No, no, no. It's okay. just the person that's walking. A person that did it. Oh, yeah. Because that's what brought him into being is somebody who voted for him. Mm-hmm. Okay. So some of it I got... I thought in- this was happening to me and I was no, like, no, no, no. what did I do to you're, deserve this? Um, You also work at the facility. Uh-huh. So here's what happened. Yeah. So the person, they like gasp, like, <gasps> but then it goes in their mouth. Ugh. And they're just like, but they're so embarrassed and proud that they don't want to admit that that like tasted really, that was like really disgusting. Yeah. Um, and so they continue to keep. So you just don't say anything. They keep doing the experiment and they don't say anything. Yeah. Because they're and like, they're if infected. I admit that I'm wrong now, this. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. So then. But also like now they're infected with what he was. Exactly. Yeah. So then they start like doing some weird like codes in the computers. Mm hmm. And then that fucks up the entire facility. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you work there. You're affected by it. Yeah. It's completely interfering with my work. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. But, like, it's interfering with other people's work. Even worse. Yeah. Like, my department, relatively untouched by it. Yeah. Even though, like, it's slowing everything down. And, like, it's much harder for us to work with other departments because, like, they are bogged down in damage mm-hmm. control. And we're, like, trying to help as much as we can. But, like, it's not really our – we have no kind of supervisory position over the Trump department. Mm-hmm. But, like, we're doing what we can and we're trying to take on as much as we can. But, like, it's tragic because it's, like – we're still generally able to carry on our work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there are like some departments that yeah. are like, okay, so what happened was some, so the person, they're like freaking out, right? Because like that stuff got in their mouth. Yeah. They don't tell anyone, but they are still freaking out. So they accidentally like knock um, like the rest of the blended body 
Mm -hmm. And that spills into the tank that they have open. It's a very bad system. It's a tank that they have open that's for like supplying the the fire alarm. Yeah, because there are like no controls. Like there's no safety controls in this place. The chain of command is very confusing and bad. Yeah. And like there are no quarantine protocol. No, not at all. Yeah. So now all of that blended body is like also in the sprinkler system for fire safety. Right. And there is one department that has like the system that the company installed. It's like faulty in one department. Yeah. And like power goes off completely. Completely. Yeah. And it keeps spraying yeah. on these people. Mm-hmm. And then the company in general just keeps pretending it's not happening. Yep. So that's, so that's 2018. Trump is. <laughs> that's Trump. That's Trump. Um, I loved this book. Me too. It really, I was like, oh, this would be a really cool series on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, it would. For sure. Like, this is where things like, this was like the cherry on top. I was like, oh, this would be perfect. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. This makes it really clear, like, why it should be a series. Yeah. Because all of it's leading to what it seems like this moment. Yeah. And then there's even more stuff that I don't even know about in book six. And which, again, I'm like, I don't know how the fuck. He picks this back up, but I'm very curious to see. So I don't know that either. Yeah. So I don't actually know the end end. I only know the 1996 end. And that's ending with book six? Yeah. And, and then, then when did he pick it up starts. again? I forget. I think it was around Twilight time. So like 2009. And then that, how many I mean, of like those Twilight are Twilight craze time. I don't remember. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. This I this when I'm reading this I was like this is why I like Pike. It was just so beautifully written and so it's so much more. It's so much deeper. Yeah, I mean it's not slasher. It's not slasher no. pick anymore. It's just I mean it was just like it's just a different being. It's a different animal completely. Because like sometimes in the mood for just like kind of trashy whatever. Yeah, but this it was nice to get to this. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Really beautiful. Um. I'm trying to think if I have any other thoughts that I must get out about this book. I don't think I do. I'm just like, this was such, this just put its stamp on me. Yeah. I'd never read this before. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say get out there and read it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like we say every time, read this series. Yeah. This is one you should be reading. Um, So I guess that wraps our show for this week. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, I was about to say to no one, do you have anything you'd like to plug? <laughs> hmm, do I? Do I have anything I would like to plug? No. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at lindsaykatai.com. <laughs> <laughs> lindsaykatai.com. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> if you go there, that is... Uh... That's where all my stuff is kept. Mm-hmm. You'll yeah. find links to your Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. No, Lindsay no, no. K- my Twitter handle is lindsaykatai.com. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have I talked about before how somebody stole lindsaykatai.com from me and now I would have to buy it back for like $2,000, $4,000 dollars or something? The companies just do this. Like if you yeah, let, they squat on if, it. Yeah. Th- if you let it lapse. They squat there and you have to buy it back from them. That's some fucking bullshit, it dude. It is fucking bullshit. We're just people. We're not companies. So we can't afford to buy it back like that. Donate to my GoFundMe <laughs> to buy back lindsaykatai.com. Because in the meantime, I have to pretend that at lindsaykatai.com is a real Twitter handle. <laughs> <laughs> this bit has to keep going. It has. It must. So free all of us from this. Help. Help us. Um, yeah. Speaking We're, of helping What would us, you like to plug? And where can um, we find you on the internet? Well, you if you go, well, you know, the whole thing, all the social medias, it's Kelly Nugie, K-E-L-L-Y-N-U-G-E-E. Dot com. But, dot com. Uh, I'm sorry, dot biz. Dot taco. <laughs> um, but if, <laughs> I forgot who it was. Oh, it was Jordan Pridgen. Do you know Jordan Pridgen? Mm-hmm. He bought, um, I think he bought like ghost pizza dot horse. <laughs> so funny that's good the horse. um i mean i wish i wish that was my website uh it's that's not very though. good 
uh, this was years ago, so it may not, it may not still be active. Um, but I want to post some of those pictures. Lindsay got some wonderful, um, um, cat hats from Japan uh -huh. for the cats. Yep. So we made LH try on different outfits. Yeah, we'll post those we'll post on those. our on our podcast Twitter, which is Teen Creeps Pod. Teen Creeps Pod. That's on everything. You can find yeah. us all over for that. Yeah. Um, um thank you to our Patreon subscribers. We really appreciate you. And uh, I should have said this at the top, but if you're an $8 subscriber, you should already have access to the plot summary Woo! for Last Vampire uh, 1 through 5 now. Nice. We recapped all of them for you. As yes. a thank you to our $8 patrons, in addition to the minisodes and the full-length outside genre episode. Yes. Um, and uh, Walgreens has just informed me oh, good. that our photo order is on its way. So you should be getting some pictures of Will Corner O'Kelly. Yeah. And also, if you're a $8 person. Yeah. And you also get a um, discount to our Teen Creeps merch. And then if you donate at the $5 level, thank you so much. You get mini sods and discount merch. Yay. Um, and... Uh, to the like we said before, to those of you who already donate, thank you so much. Yeah, and um, if you can't donate five dollars, you can hop on and donate whatever you can. Seriously, per month. anything you can helps. Set your level. Uh, Patreon dot com slash Teen Creeps. Uh, if you can't help in that way, tell a friend, leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That helps us yeah. a lot. Um, and then do you know what you're reading? What we're reading next week? Oh, guys, we're going back into VC Andrews with mm -hmm. some heaven. I just started reading it. Let me tell you, I am on board. <laughs> I love it. It's insane already. Like, it's just like, it's so like, it's so much and it's so VC and it's so good. I'm so happy. <laughs> just like after the nightmare of White Fern, like this yeah. is like the shit. It is so good. Awesome. Uh, I can't wait for us to talk about that. Looking next forward week. to it. Um, any other biz? No. Okay. We'll see you guys next week. Keep it creepy. Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Kelly Nugent, Lindsay Katai, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog.